developmental dysplasia of the hip so this is a disease condition usually affecting the children so the disease is also known as congenital dislocation of the hip so which means by birth itself the child may be having a dislocated hip that disease is known as developmental dysplasia of the hip so now we'll see regarding uh, the definition the types the clinical manifestations and the types of management we can provide to these children okay so let's see the definition of ddh so developmental dysplasia of the hip or ddh which is known as a group of disorders which is usually developing due to the abnormal development of the hip so this abnormal development of the hip that can develop at the time of intrauterine life or at the time of delivery or later following the infancy period or in the childhood etc so developmental dysplasia means it's not a single disorder but it's a group of disorder which is usually developing because of the developmental abnormalities okay understand now moving to the instance of the disease so uh, it's believed that the instance of hip instability is approximately seen in uh, 10 per 1000 live births okay and the incidence of dislocation is usually seen 1 in 1000 live births hmm? and 60 percentage of the these causes are usually happening in the uh, female children and the left hip is involved in 60 percentage of the cases the right hip is involved in 20 percentage of the cases and both the hips are involved in 20 percentage of the cases Okay, so this is regarding the incidence and it is believed that the disease is most commonly seen among the female children. Now moving to the etiology. So here the exact cause of uh, DDH is not known but it is believed that certain factors like gender, so as I already said it is most commonly seen among the female children. Then birth order, birth order in the sense uh, if the mother has given delivery to so many babies, not in the first baby, later pregnancies and if any family history uh, or any siblings with this uh, developmental dysplasia of the hip or the parents with the developmental dysplasia of the hip, then intrauterine positioning of the child is also considered as a reason and intrauterine crowding because of any multiple fetuses, then joint laxity and postnatal positioning of the child etc are considered as the major reason for the development of DDH and here the exact ideology is not clear. So it is believed that uh, there are certain factors which include physiological factors. So under physiological factors, the maternal hormone influence as well as the intrauterine positioning. So in the maternal hormones like uh, relaxin and all, they will be leading to the relaxation of all the smooth muscles and joints. So this is considered as a reason. The next one is mechanical factor. So under mechanical factor, it is believed that uh, the type of delivery like uh, if the child is in breech presentation and uh, exerting so much pressure during the time of pulling the baby during the time of delivery, then multiple fetuses, then large infant sizes are considered as the mechanical factor. And genetic factors are responsible for uh, most of the reason for the development of this BDH. And it is believed that if the child is having any sibling or the parents with the same disease condition, 30% of chances are developing for the child also. Okay, so, so these all are the factors, physiological factors, mechanical factors and the genetic factors are also uh, involved in the development of the DDH. Now we'll see regarding the various clinical types. So in that, first one is acetabular dysplasia or otherwise this is known as relaxation. So here, this is the mild form of DDH. Okay, so here, uh, you know the acetabulum acetabulum means this is the socket in the hip where the uh, femur will attach so here the acetabulum will be very shallow and this doesn't provide enough space for the femoral head to attach understand as a result what will happen this will be leading to the instability of the joint so here uh, the acetabulum acetabulum is the hip socket that provide a very less space for the hemo, uh, femoral head to join with that Okay, as a result, this will lead into, uh, which can result in pain and in the later stages, it can develop into osteoarthritis. So this is the very mild form. This is known as acetabular dysplasia. So here we can see the image. Here, the acetabulum is very shallow and which doesn't provide enough space for the femoral head to attach. Okay. And the next one is subluxation. So subluxation is the largest percentage of the DDH. So here, this is also known as the incomplete dislocation of the hip. 
So here the femoral head will come and it will remain contact with the acetabulum but because of the overstretched capsules and tearing of the ligamentum, the head cannot attach to the socket. Okay, so this is known as incomplete dislocation. So here the acetabulum is very wide but because of the stretched capsules and the ligamentum tear, the head of the femur couldn't attach with the, the socket. So that is known as subluxation. And next is regarding dislocation. So here there will be either complete or partial dislocation of the femoral head from the socket will happen. So here it can displace either posteriorly or superiorly over the fibrocartilaginous ring. Okay, so here these all are the three types. Understand? So here it is a comparison. This first picture is the normal picture where the ball is attached with the socket and in this place here there is a large and shallow socket you can see and in subluxation also the same condition ligamentum tear would not allow the capsule to attach and in the last one is the dislocation. Okay. Now we will see regarding the various clinical manifestations of the disease. So in the clinical manifestation there will be shortening of the limb on the affected side. So that is uh, visibly uh, at the time of physical examination itself. Okay, then restricted abduction of the hip on the affected side. Abduction means mm. moving away from the body. Okay, so here the restricted abduction of the hip joint can be seen. And when you make the child to sleep on the prone position, you can see the unequal gluteal fold. So here I have shown you an image. You can go through that. Okay, next is regarding galaxy sign. So galaxy sign means this is the asymmetry of the gluteal as well as the thigh fold with the shortening of the thigh. So where on the affected side, the child may be having a very short thigh where the length of the femur will be short. At the same time, the child may be having unequal gluteal as well as the thigh fold. Okay, so that sign is known as galaxy sign. Next is alley sign. Alley sign also I have shown the picture here. When you assess the length of the femur, uh, you can see there will be the apparent shortening of the femur on the affected sign is visible. Okay, so these all are the clinical manifestations. And the, one of the common physical examination that usually perform is the positive otolani test to identify the disease condition. Okay, so this is usually performed by the examiner by flexing the hips and knees at a 90 degree angle. So where the child will be in the supine position and after that the hip and knee is flexed at a 90 degree. Okay, then with the index finger, the examiner will place it anteriorly over the greater trochander and he will apply a gentle pressure. Okay. Then after that, gently and smoothly, the examiner will update the infant's leg using the thumb. Updating means moving away from the body. Okay. And if the child is having any kind of DDH, a positive clunk sound can be heard, which indicate that the femoral head is again relocating into the acetabulum. Clear? So, this is known as positive autoline test. So, here the child will be placed in the supine position with the, the knees and hip is placed at a 90 degree. Then the examiner with his index finger placing anterior pressure upon the greater trochanter and generally he will abduct the infant leg using his thumb. And a positive clunk sound indicate that the head of the femur is relocating anteriorly into the acetabulum. Okay. And next is positive barrel of test. So this is also easily performed manual and this is usually done by adducting the hip which means bringing the thighs towards the midline or towards the body. And here the examiner will be applying a gentle pressure upon the knee uh, and this force will be applied posteriorly. And if the hip dislocated, the hip can be popped out of the socket with a clunk sound. Okay, so here I can show you the images. So this is the Barlow manual. So here the child is placed in the supine position and with the examiner will be adducting the thighs of the child that is moving the ch thighs child towards his the body. Okay, and he is applying mild pressure to his knee and his thumb pushes laterally. And if the femoral head slip out of the socket, a clunk sound can be heard. And this indicates that the child is having a developmental dysplasia of the hip. 
Okay, so in both tests you can hear a clung sound. In Barlow manual, the clung sound is developed because of it is slipping out of the socket, and in Ortolani, it is relocating into the socket. Okay, so this is the comparison both Barlow manual and Ortolani's manual. Next is regarding the clinical manifestation you can see in the older children. So here the affected leg shorter than that of the other leg. And a trellenberg sign is seen. So here when the child is stand first on his foot, then on the other, that is that time he will be holding into a chair or someone's hand. That, that time he will be bearing the weight upon his affected hip. That time the pelvis will tilt downward on the normal child instead of going into the upward. Okay. And next one, the child will be having marked lordosis. And when we make the child to stand, there will be a waddling gait will be there. Okay. And coming to the diagnosis, how we can diagnose the condition? So the uh, DDH is very easy to diagnose because this is clinically visible at the time of birth itself. Okay. So the uh, initial examination to be carried out following the delivery and carefully monitored to identify the signs and symptoms of any short hip or any short femur or any uh, changes in the or waddling uh, like the child cannot hold his leg properly. So all these manifestations has to be clearly monitored. Then followed by which, if you are suspecting any kind of DDH, the auto lining and Barlow's test can be conducted to identify the diagnosis. Then a history can be collected from the parents and physical examination and evaluation of the clinical signs and a radiographic examination. So radiographic examination will give a clear picture regarding the uh, condition. Coming to therapeutic management. So in the therapeutic management, so the treatment has to be begun as early as possible. Okay, otherwise, the early intervention is more favorable uh, to restoration of the health of the child. If the treatment is delayed and the severity is very high, we couldn't do anything. And this usually depending upon the child's age and the extent of the disease, etc. And if the child is a newborn and up to six months, how we can manage? The hip joint is maintained in a dynamic uh, position uh, that is usually uh, the femur is attached to the acetabulum and it can be placed in an attitude of flexion and we can do the splinting. And the commonly used uh, brace is public hairless. This is a brace which can be most widely used and with the help of time, motion and gravity, uh, is, this will help to bring the hip abducted and it usually take around 3 to 5 months for the uh, uh, recovery okay and if the child is 6 to 18 months so so uh, 6 to 18 months it will be very difficult for us to recognize this disease until we need the child to stand okay and we can notice the shortening of the limb and contracture of the hip muscles as well as the gluteal fold changes etc we can uh, see and if you notice any such manifestations in the child we, it will take around uh, three weeks to manage this one. So here the child needs to undergo an attempt of closed reduction of the hip using general anesthesia and still the surgery is not successful and open reduction is performed. Okay, and after the surgery, the child needs to be placed in a hip spica for two to four months until the hip is stable. Okay, understand. So here surgically they will manipulate, they will do the open reduction and manipulation. So that is regarding the child with the six to 18 months. And if it is an older child, so usually the correction of DDH is very difficult for an older child. As I said you early, the early treatment will be beneficial. If it is delayed, the management will be very difficult. So here also operative reduction is usually uh, performed and where pre-operative traction as well as the post-operative traction is given and the contracted muscles are surgically corrected. Okay, so after that the child will be placed in a cast. Uh, and after the cast removal, uh, weight bearing, everything will be permitted based upon the condition of the child. And regarding the nursing management, we already discussed in case of uh, congenital club food, what are the pre-operative care, post-operative care and all. So you can go through that and learn, okay. So I think it's clear for you. Thank you for... Awesome.